and even more um, more amazingly, how can you summarize and at least uh, you know introduce that in the confines of a 200 or so page book? Now I know the answer, but I'm the advocate for the listener. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. The short answer to your question is I can't do that. The only person who can do that is you, the reader. But what I do in my course and what I try to do in my book is the following. I lay out the vision of an ideal life. And in my book, the ideal life is one where you wake up in the morning with a deep sense of purpose. When you find that everything you do is consonant with your values, when you are completely alive, when what you are doing is of benefit to a greater society, and you move with the unshakable conviction that what you are doing is your unique purpose in life, when you have that, then you are re- living a fulfilled life, and that is my vision. And virtually everybody, when I describe and articulate that, says, yes, that is where I want to be. Virtually everybody also recognizes that where they are is some very considerable distance from that. But, and this this is why my course is so successful, I encourage them to hold on to that vision. There are exercises that I take them through which palpably demonstrate to them that, yes, that vision is attainable. And what I enjoin upon them is to not settle for anything less. Too often in life we make compromises. This is what I really want to do, but I can't make money on that. I have a family to support. I've got financial obligations. So let me put all that aside as a pipe dream and I'm going to go become an accountant or investment banker or whatever. And I ask them to think about this as a challenge. It's their challenge to figure out how they can incorporate that which makes them passionate into that which they are presently doing and so transform themselves. Because my basic thesis is that your ideal job, the one that I described, does not exist. It has to be crafted together. It has to be built in bits and pieces and assembled somewhat like a jigsaw puzzle. And what I do is I give them a blueprint for this is how you go about doing it. It it could take a long time, perhaps decades, but the interesting thing is that as you start along that path, you will get enough success soon enough to know that you're in the right direction. And that is an Im- Im- invaluable gift. Well, you're talking also about this concept of the journey and the process. Yes. And one of the most interesting uh, activities in my life, and I've shared this with you, <laughs> I'm laughing. I spent about a half a million dollars on therapy over my life. And is it that high? Everybody listening, a half a million dollars <laughs> free, okay? Okay. Everybody is obsessed in life with an end product. They want to be the most successful, the most handsome, have the most beautiful home, wife, husband, body, children, the highest achievers. If they achieve that, they're waiting for the heavens to open and the angels to blare and for 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 euphoria to prevail, and it never happens. The true, in my opinion, and I think you'd agree, the true secret to life is that the process, and you're just evolving every day, and it's a really... It's a glorious adventure, don't you think? Absolutely. And there's one other part to it also, Jay. Uh, In my book, I talk about something called the other-centered universe. What does that that mean? That's a very important concept. Most of the time, we live our lives in what I call a me-centered universe. And a me-centered universe, what we're always doing is we're looking at everything and interpreting every event from the perspective what is its impact on me? If our spouse gets a great job offer, we say, gee, how is it going to affect a relationship? If our daughter comes back with tattoos and piercings in inappropriate places, we say, oh, what are my friends going to think of my parenting? It's always me. You know, how is it going to impact me? And uh, most of us live in that all 
you know, virtually all of the time. And one of the things that uh, all of us should know is that when we live primarily in a me-centered universe, we are going to have considerably more than our share of frustration, anguish, disappointment, and all of, all of the rest of that. It comes with the territory. So all of what you say is true, but one of the imperatives, if you want to live a fulfilled life, is to at least some of the time get out of the me-centered universe. And what I advocate very strongly, and this has been proven by you know, countless persons who have tried it, is when what you are doing is deliberately aligned so that it provides benefits and greater good to a larger society, then not only is your degree of success greater, but you will be far, far, far more fulfilled. In your own work, Jay, you sometimes talk about falling in love with the customer rather than falling in love with your own brilliance, and that is one application of this principle. Very good. So uh, the most important qualities you would say somebody must possess to discover their true passion and purpose in life is getting out of their own way, right? Uh, that, that's uh, basically correct. Uh, what you basically need, first of all, are persistence. In other words, you have to decide that you are not going to settle for anything less. You are going to live a life as described, and if you're not there yet, you're going to go right ahead until you find it. And the second part of it, and it's kind of allied, is awareness. Most of us are very unaware. There are things which move us, and we kind of say oh, that that's a pipe dream, ignore it. We don't really know what we're thinking, and we've done such a good job of snubbing these subtle impulses that come and give us direction. We're so, so very adept at snuffing out intuition that eventually we don't have it at all. So, but if you are...